Hello my friends of Middle Earth and welcome to the Beyond Standard Channel, my name is Shanks and today we are once again on the map Anorian in a phenomenal matchup between good and evil versus another good and evil. We have Isengard and Gondor versus Rohan and Isengard. So Isengard on each side, Warchan is going to be used offensively from the left side team but defensively from the right side team and that's not very really good, you know, you want to use it offensively. In the meantime, the soldiers are moving forward, at least one battalion, which is a mistake one can't defend. There is going to be Alvin Wood from the Gondor to protect his ally settlement, and the slaughterhouse is quite tanky compared to a lumber mill. And also Isengard should be fighting this, you know. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, the soldiers are not strong, not stronger than Uruks at least. Interesting choice to commit to the furnace. But he will be able to destroy that's pretty decent and also forcing his opponent to build multiple towers which cost 150 each actually 135 because he took this mill from his ally too so isengard's eco will not be bad as long as those two mills remaining under his control we have a furnace into the uruk pit into another furnace the soldiers shouldn't be able to deal too much damage here against two uruks but he was able to clean all the workers and each of them will cost 25 Dollars. <laughs> Actually, not dollars. Imagine, you know, <laughs> you would be poor. <laughs> I don't know any beefy me player who is actually rich, you know what I mean? It's a game for the average people, I'm assuming. Just like I am, you know? Okay. Beautiful. So, easy defense. I mean, interesting playstyle. Usually, you will see Gondor putting on pressure with the two soldiers, but he was choosing to defend his ally. Not bad. And also, this Eisen has like three settlements outside. He will be quite rich. We have a blacksmith, 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 blacksmith in a farm into the stable. And this Rohan player going for three farms into the stable. My voice is cracking in the well behind. I don't like the positioning. I like the well in the front. So my units can just heal up from this location. And they don't need to go all the way back in into the end of the castle, you know? Okay, he was creeping first with the Rohirrim level two. Not bad. This lumber mill will be taken down, I believe. Maybe not. He is repairing it. That's pretty decent. Yeah, he will be able to defend this. Not, ba not bad. Actually, pretty decent. Look at the workers repairing, you know. Uruk pit level 2. That means he will be able to recruit some pikemen. And also a good looking base for the red eisen at the bottom left side. So it's red, red versus blue, blue. Who's gonna get the last hit here? On the creep. Let's see. Oh, Rohirrim got it, level 3, and one part of the money will be taken by Gondor, and the other part will be taken by Rohan. Oh no, Pikeman, beautiful trample. That's a, that's a very good moment here for Rohan, because he's getting so many power points from the tramples. Now here is a readable from the Spellbook, and also a good looking castle. He has full bees. Remember, he has two farms outside, unlike his opponent, the Gondor, who has only one farm outside. But keep in mind that the Gondor has just way more spots in the castle compared to Rohan. So you have like nine spots in the castle, while Rohan has seven. That's why Rohan is much more depending on the on the map control, you know, even more than Gondor. Uruk pit level two. I don't like the positioning in the front, but it's okay. Now we will see lots of pikemen. For now, Rohan is putting pressure and Gondor is defending. Towers are hurting, no lords for the Aizen here, and no lords, but it's gonna be changed for the Red Isengard player, lords. And, you know, basically Rohan and Gondor, uh, Rohan and Aizen have more leadership than Gondor and Aizen. Because this Gondor going for the horses means he will not have Boromir or Farami anytime soon, and Rohan can just simply recruit Theoden later on. Beautiful trample into the crossbow man. They don't get one shot at though from the Alvin Wood, they get a bit tanky. And Rohirrim, they need to bail. There is Theorin on the field to support them. But remember, they're against Gondor. And on the Elvin Wood, we have no leadership. And this unit should be sent inside the castle. And there is Hobbit in the middle. You know, he can be cloaked to deny the opponent team to capture the settlement. And, oh, Boromir? Nah, Lords. Might be in trouble. He has no carnage. Run money will be taken by Gondor too but good thing for Aizen is that Boromir didn't get the last hit you know so he needs like he needs like a whole level still to get to level four and also the top creep will be creeped by this Lourdes remember the Rohirrim they can't deal with the troll and the citadel from Rohan can't shoot so what he needs to do is move 
to his allies castle so the towers and the lords can take care of the troll lords is already running oh but armory is shooting okay never mind armory is shooting theorin <laughs> theorin is a mean one oh, 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 oh. okay he got him he got him okay not bad not bad troll is raging but it's fine so let's take a look into the levels of the heroes because that's actually very important you know boromir level 3 didn't get any experience pretty much and we have also lurz a farami here also level 3 um gondor was able to destroy this farm these mills have not been destroyed entire game by the way almost level 2 gondor has stable level 2 has the shields purchased now he needs to go for the bleeds and heavy armor to get stronger horses and where is lurz at I don't know where the Lourdes is. Lourdes is here. Also level 1 only. So he missed the cripple on Theorin. But he got crippled himself by this Lourdes. Lourdes is level 3. And there is no cripple. That means this Lourdes is stronger than this Lourdes. Also Carnage gives you knockdown and resistance. There comes the heal. But Carnage Lourdes is no one you want to be joking with. Warchan has been used. Faramir could have been using Funding Arrow. But it's on cooldown. And this Lourdes is as fast as Boromir. So that means... As, he, as long as he keeps running away, this Boromir can't catch him, you know? And you want to be careful, there are too many towers and you will eventually die if you keep committing. Heavy armor purchase on this Rohirrim. Oh, okay, I was smelling a Git Rush, but he's changing his mind. There are some pikemen you want to be avoiding. Multiple level 2 slaughterhouses outside. Good looking eco, armor in the front. And also Rohan didn't even recapture the settlement just yet. But he's making the transition into the archer range, which is kind of questionable i think regular horses could do the trick because your ally the aizen will have combos himself and there is going to be a beast rush happening now with the knights of gondor and boromir tanking War uh, warchan has been used commitment on the uruk pit but he might lose actually all his horses remember he is on cooldown there comes the saruman the uruk pit is safe boromir has been crippled the one man standing beautiful fireball on this on the Faramir and both the brothers, both the captains of Gondor, Faramir and Boromir, have been slain without finishing the mission to destroy the Uruk pit. There is the Tainted Land cover. This is one is from Isengard player Balindru. And because he doesn't want to have an enemy land in front of his castle. Can it make sense? Um, you need in total three Yomon archers to get the archer range level two. That will give you the chance to get the fire up, you know, upgrade unlocked. Lourdes has been revived, level one only. And now we will also see Armory coming up for Balindru. So he'll choose to rush the Wizard Saruman first. Lourdes is basically now level 4. It's only one more level to get to level 5. And these three combos might get slaughtered. Fireball is available. Uh, what is the Saruman doing actually? It's a big mistake. Beautiful. Nah, no, actually not very beautiful. He's gonna die. Oh, that's a big mistake. Why would you do this, you know? Running into the Lourdes like this. That's an investment over 5,000, guys. 5.5k, you know, that's a lot of resources. And he just wasted them. Beautiful Lords with the Carnage, healing splash damage, finishing off the 4 Battalion of the Knights of Gondor. And now we have the heroes back in the action. Faramir and Boromir joining simultaneously. And this Isengard has been doing good job now by killing uh, Saruman. It would be even more ideal if Lourdes would be the one who gets the last hit, but you know, you can't have all the things you want. Beautiful catch. Theoden is almost level two. Lourdes just got level two. If Boromi gets level four and this Lourdes gets level five, that's gonna be a crazy boost of damage leadership for his combos. And they will basically be hitting like a truck, you know? Carnage is not available yet. Lourdes is recovering nearly level five. Saruman is being revived. It takes you two minutes to get him back into the game and also 2,000 resources, which of course will slow down the gaming progress of the Isengard player. This 2,000 could have been invested into the upgrades faster and you could have gotten like a big army already, you know? Full army of Rohirrim and Rohirrim archers now. You want to demolish this, I think. And also Aragorn could be nice, you know, because you can put, give Aragorn to your ally and your ally will receive with Aragorn more leadership. There comes the Elvin Woods. This one is from the Gondor player. And also Theorin is running it down. I think these players don't understand what Lords is capable of. And it's even a nightmare situation over here. Boro got level 4. It means constant 60% damage leadership for those Pikeman crossbowman combo from Isengard. 
With Warchant, it's able to stack. And also Lourdes, level 5, is able to stack. When Farah gets level 5, he will have armor. So long story short, these combos will receive a huge, you know, buff in terms of damage and tankiness. Saruman is back into the game. Speechcraft has been used to level up those combos to level 1. One of them to level 2 at least. Berserker, multiple combos. These regular combos are tankier compared to the pikemen and crossbowmen combos. Pikemen are way more vulnerable against fire damage. But obviously, they are great against horses, you know. Ganav has been recruited. Ganav the Grey, to be precise, because Ganav doesn't have the power points. Mifrandium is a grey one. He needs a power point to be white, you know. And without white, you can't use your easter lights. And your spells will deal way less damage, and also they recharge way slower. So, hitting white is so beneficial. Hit him. The berserk is juking, turning and killing the pikeman, but getting trampled to death. Okay, this Isengard is preparing for a big, big attack. Boro leadership, war chant, and Faramir leadership almost unlocked, as well as Gandalf leadership. So basically quite a lot of tankiness and damage. But no Saruman just yet. Middle will be captured by the Gondor player. That's pretty decent because you can build a statue well and even a siege works, you know, the workshop here, this structure. And then you can get some trebuchet upon the field. Pretty much be extremely strong. So two combos, but they have Lord's leadership and Saruman leadership and Theodin leadership. So if they can move before the statue comes up, maybe, but I think it's too late. And committing to the middle camp with the recovery of the well, plus the leadership from the statue, might be a big mistake. Lord's getting chunked a little bit. And also keep in mind that these combos are very vulnerable against fire. So we shall see. There is Ganov. That's the guy you want to cripple with your Lord's. Warchan is going to be used. And also from this team. Theodin is level 3, I believe. Yeah, level 2. Saruman is coming in clutch. Is you looking for a chance? Install one combo. Land has been used. And Ganov is coming now. Ganov, 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 Ganov. He's getting chunk, 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 chunk. And land will be covered now by Isengard. Play heap of snacks. So I don't know whose land this actually is. But we can take a look into this. It's the land from the right, se right team. You can see the blue animation of the glow on the land. And this kind of gives you the information about whose land it is. He was able to steal one of the Rohiri marchers. But the fight still continues. Boromir is quite a tanky boy. He won't be getting slain that fast. Ganav can approach. And yeah. So the team has to disengage. This blast has been used from the Ganav. And he's now turning into the Ganav to white. Two wizards. One combo level 5. And also damage combos. But it's not a big deal because they can recover here. Remember this lane is from the right side team. So fighting on this would be a big mistake for the red right side team. Because here they have like no leadership. Fireball is on cooldown. Blast is too dangerous to commit because they have still a lot of leadership. And now the question is when the rain is going to be available next. So Gondor has no power points. He has only heal, Alvin Wood, and also the Gun of the White power point. He has also zero units upon the field. All he currently has has our archers. You can see zero out of 200 com uh, command points. Going for the marketplace. Industry has been used from his ally on the blacksmith of his ally. So Gondor should be quite rich. But he needs to make an army very, very soon. He also demolished the stable. He refuses to go for additional horses. We have Heat Piss next. This is the Blue Isengard player. He has four and a half power points collected after the industry, Tainted Land, and War Chant. He needs two and a half power points to get to unlock the Freezing Rain, which of course is very, very powerful. The Elvin Wood over here, by the way, is from the Gondor player. So that's why they have even more leadership. And glorious charge. Beautiful fireball into the crossbow man. Beautiful trample incoming. But they have so much leadership. They don't die. Saruman has been crippled. Saruman, Saruman, Saruman. And Gandalf has been crippled. In the meantime, we have a fight between Gandalf and Lords. Can Lords take down the wizard himself? The answer is yes. Lords sniping down. With a half of combos, of course. The wizard himself. In the meantime, this fight continues. But it's a bad fight to take. When you see you're losing like this, just retreat to the, to the middle camp, you know? And he's getting chunked level 7. Safety level 3 combo, but he won't be able to save them. Maybe Boromir. Boromir will get spear throw by Elmo. Elmo also gets level 5. So Rohan has now full leadership unlocked. There comes the freezing rain from Balinduru Chivitanga. And it's also available for Hippie Snakes. 
but he's not using it. Hippesnix is holding on it. There comes the warning arrow to finish off Lourdes to revenge the death of Gandalf. And also Faramir gets level 6. What a hero fiesta party. And also a lot of money for the players because the mills are kind of under their control pretty much all game long. Nobody is going for the map control. They are just building up armies and fighting. But this is way more entertaining this way. You know what I mean? Okay, Rohan is almost four power points after the Elven Wood. It looks like you want to save up for the end allies which is not bad because you can summon the ends on top of the enemy combos and they can trample them and they can one shot everything you know aragon could be nice he's reviving his theorine but he's kind of poorish um yeah he needs also the grand harvest on his farms you now to get a bit more resources especially on this level three farms it's going to be quite helpful we have a lot of army here from balindru his heroes got slain on level seven and level seven so pretty high level heroes and with the ends from the rohan spellbook you can even make an opening on the enemy castle you know what i mean so it's not bad at all like remember those horses they are very strong with eoma leadership plus tyrion leadership plus war chant plus the glorious charge they can also deal crazy amount of damage Gandalf has been revived boromir is about to be revived as well Tyrion is back in the business we have a huge army of rohirrim most of them being normal rohirrim we hear Saruman getting back into the game and his servant Lourdes is gonna join very soon as well. So now it's a very awkward situation. You need to fight around the middle because the combos are way too slow. What Rohan can do is Rohan can try to rush the enemy base, you know, with the Rohirrim archers and this much leadership they can actually deal a significant amount of damage. Fireball, beautiful land being covered for no reason without the trample. You wanna trample, you wanna cover the land as you're trampling. The horses, they died. There is just too much leadership going on. Still, I think he stole one combo. That's not bad. Ganov has been blasting everything, but he's gonna get crippled. Lord's Deja Vu, throwing his sword, using Carnage. Let it be Carnage. But I think it's worth it, dude. Ganov got a juicy blast off just before he died. And Elma dying. Boromir level 8, Faramir level 9. I don't know what's going on. Level 6 over here, level 8 for Saruman with the Villa of Saruman he is now healing too Eome has been killed from this player and uh, Balindru was able to save his you know heroes at least but he got a big L because his combos got smashed level 10 combo level 5 combo Faramina can level them up even you know with the captain of Gondor 8 power points collected hippie snacks has 7 in the bank and I think I'm smelling the potential EOD and also the Balrog in this game. We have Rangers now for additional firepower. For Rangers with this much leadership, they will be hitting very hard. Long story short, your, your heroes shouldn't make any risky plays. There is just too much leadership, too much distraction. So Valindru has to get some help from his ally. Especially Theodine would be nice. Aragorn would be amazing, of course, but he has not been getting Aragorn support all game. There comes the Horn, but there's a level 5 unit which is gonna be immune to the fear. Fireball! Fireball! <laughs> oh, Saruman! It's a bad fireball. There comes the Cloud Break. I don't know whose Cloud Break this is actually. It's from Gondor, the Cloud Break. It means enemy will have less armor and less movement speed. Uh, we, have, we have heard the blast. I don't know what is going on over here. 10 power points for Rippus and Eggs. The heroes from the blue side team are still doing a phenomenal job. Faramir is alive, Boromir is alive. He has not even been using the Forgondor ability, by the way. We could have been using it for additional... There, there we go. That's the Forgondor for the White City. GC has been used. Um, remember, both the heroes from Isengard died. So, and also, these combos are badly damaged. But that's the good thing, you know. They can always get back and recover it to well. Ganov has been sent until, back until his task is done. They keep fighting with Tower Guard Ranger combination. The ability from Boromir is gonna wear off very, very soon. There we go, it's gone. Beautiful fireball incoming. You wanna kill those heroes, man. Like, Saruman is very strong in terms of DPS, and he has like crazy manipulation abilities, right? With the Warm Tongue and also the Will of Saruman and, st and stuff. But he's very squishy. So you can kill him. Looking for a blast, canceling the blast. Level, highly level uh, Horohira marches. You don't wanna be joking with this, man. Look at the DPS they are dealing, that's crazy. Oh, but beating in theory, insta crippled, insta crippled. Lourdes is on point with the cripples, I'm telling you. The Lourdes, you know, both of them. 
Okay, so we, we got a finally like a, like a, a silent moment and we, we want to take a look into the power points. So Rohan, this is the top left player, has five power points collected after the Alvin Alliance, the Alvin Wood, the Draft and the Hill. So he's like half a power point away from getting to the Eagles and uh, not to the Eagles, to the Ends, I'm sorry. Okay, so in his ally, the Aizen, has 13 and a half power points. So he's only six and a half power points away from the Balrog special summon. He's about to get his heroes back into the game. Then we have Mifrandia, the Gunner player, who has actually almost five power points in the bank. After the Cloud Parade, that means he's only five and a half power points away from his own AOD. And last but not least, the Isengard player, Hippie Snacks. He's sitting on currently 13 power points in total, needing exactly seven more. It looks like they want to go to the Rohan base with two with the two Ballista. Also workshop for Gondor, but he has no more command points available, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, his command points kept, so he can't produce any more units because he has too many combos. So three Tower Guard Soldier combination, Tower Guard uh, Ranger combination, and two, three separate Rangers. Lots of firepower and fully stacked leadership. Farami leadership, Poro, Lords, Saruman, Ganalf. And also, of course, the war chant. So this is going to be a big fight. And might be, maybe this fight is going to even determine the outcome of the game. This is a huge army, dude. And, oh, but this is also a huge army. I don't know. Like, I can't. Guys, before the fight starts, pause the video and let me know in the comment section down below who's going to win the fight. Before you watch the fight, okay? Do it now. Because now it's too late. Land has been used, Fort Gondor has been used, Glow is incoming, Rain has been activated from Palindru, not yet from Hippie Snakes. Trample, 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 and Land has been used. We have seen Ganav being crippled, Ganav is using the Lightning Sword. In the meantime, the horses keep trampling. There comes the Villa of Saruman from Palindru uh, with the healing. Ganav is getting chung, 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 chung. Ganav is gonna die here, there is no way he can survive. Plus 490 for killing the White Wizard. 17 and a half power point for the Isengard. And Balindru has already the Balrog special summon. And it looks like the red side team won actually the fight. I don't know what I've been focusing at. Maybe I've missed a lot. You guys are lucky because you can rewatch the fight over and over again to see the details. But it's hard to see to catch every moment with this many heroes being included in the fight. And it's not even a close fight, I don't know what happened. How did they lose this fight so hard? Maybe because of the horses? Anyways, Balrog is available, boys. The problem is you can't finish the castle and win the game because there is a middle camp you need to be taken care of. And also, Ganov has been killed, but Boro Farah alive. And also, Lourdes and Saruman has been killed. So low-key, I think it's the best thing to use Balrog on the enemy Aizen piece. I'm telling you guys. I think that's the best thing you can do. Ignore the Gondor because he has two bases, but Aizen has only one base. Use Balrog here, destroy the Uruk pit, destroy the Orfang, prep fire like this, and with your army you can finish him off. Rohan is recovering, Aizen is recovering with some of the army, lots of high level units. Balrog is available now for Hippie Snakes too. And yeah. Boom chakalaka! <laughs> <laughs> Get over here. But we have two Balrogs in one game. You got Balrog, I got Balrog to mate. I got Balrog to mate. The whip is on cooldown. This Balrog has to keep flying. There is a wizard you can be whipping. There is a lord you can be whipping. There is an Eoma you can be whipping. This Balrog over here destroying in the middle camp. Uh, in the meantime, the middle camp. This Balrog has still some time left. He can get at least one more breath fire. You need to see that coming. Make a post on gate and get out of here. Get out of here. Get out. Get out. He's trying to get away from the Balrog of Morgoth. In the meantime, this Balrog is about to finish the middle camp. Can he get away? Actually, this Balrog's micro was not very good. He will not be even able to blast one more time. And also, this Balrog was almost able. Pew! Oh, the, could, he couldn't get the whip off on the trebuchet. In the middle camp barely was able to be saved. The ends in the meantime though, what is happening in this game? Beautiful fireball, the Uruk pit has been destroyed, it's actually not bad because the Uruk pit level 1 will produce units 50% slower. So you need to invest 20 seconds instead of being able to recruit them in 10, you know. That's the main differential, Gandalf is protector of the White City, waiting at the gates, Palindru sending up the army, he was able to save his heroes so that's pretty decent. Eoman is alive, Theorin is alive, no Aragorn, all game, never mind, here's Aragorn. Aragorn is here even with Anduri's sword, finally. 
Uh, and how much Gondor needs? Gondor needs two power points, and Rohan needs eight and a half power points. So be careful with the Saruman. There comes the land. I don't know whose land this is, but there comes the Cloud Break. Another land. Chunk. Got used. Uh, we love Saruman. Can have got crippled. We gotta take a look into the power points from Gondor because he is getting there. He has now enough power points for the EOD. Will he pick it and use it? Aragorn is tanky, but not tanky enough. This army is so strong. And Theodin and Lourdes were not in position. The Warm Tongue is available to be used. Theodin is giving now final leadership. Um, the Tower Guards in the front will get melted from these combos. Ganaf is looking for a chance. A boom, chakalaka. Mifrandia, the White Rider, almost level 10, by the way. There comes the big steal from Saruman, but he insta got killed. And EOD available now, level 8 combo, but Ganoff can go in a few seconds for yet another blast. And get almost to level 10. Rohan still needs so many power points for the level 10 himself. Middle camp is going to be rebuilt very, very soon. Uruk pit, double Uruk pit here for Aizen. He knows at this point of the game, it's all about spamming units, getting units on the field ASAP. He's only even making crossbowmen for the maximum fire damage, which is a big mistake, obviously, because Rohirrim, Rohirrim with the glorious charge can just one-shot them. There comes the Easter light. He's trying to get to the missing experience for the for you know say it for the war of power but it's not going to be even used he's using the EOD to kill the remaining army from Isengard again of almost level 10 but close is not close enough you know there comes the freezing rain this one is from Palindro and that means this army has no leadership Rohirrim might save the day eventually Glorious Charge is not available though and Theodin riding on forward is a big mistake beautiful fireball Theodin, you should be just waiting a few seconds. Now you will die with unupgraded horses and without using the GC. Patience, patience is the key to victory, boys. Like, wait 10 more seconds and you should be Gucci. All of these units would be just dead. Rohan, far away from getting to the point of the EOD. Like, by far. Like, he's 6 power points. Aizen players already used it and it's gonna be available for the second time very soon. Valindra has been defeated. What a game, dude. Big fights, big fiesta. I hope you enjoyed this. You know, this army clashing. I like this. You know, I like this. And it's possible because of the map Anorian, in which map control doesn't really matter that much. And they can just focus on building armies and then just fight, 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 fight. Micro is very important in those fights. Hero control is extremely important. If not the most important thing, you want to keep your heroes alive, you know. Rohan holding his ground, he's going for Legolas and for Eoma, can the Rohirrim Mark <laughs> turn this around? I don't think so, I don't think so, because they are coming, you know? He's using the lightning sword, he's like, knock, knock, who is there? Firewall, the wizards are knocking. Knock, knock, on the heaven's door, my friends, blast it. You can blast also the gate, by the way. You see, it deals great damage, and also Saruman can do this. Two wizards actually can break it, you know. Let's combine our spells. You want to get closer, though. When you Also, Water of Power can kill it. He's level 10. Let's combine our strengths. Saruman, to destroy the gate and end the life of the Riddermark. Okay, it's a very interesting choice of putting the Rohirrim match on top of the wall. Oh, actually, they are dealing great damage. Holy... And he got two levels out of that. Eoma leadership, statue leadership, not bad. Okay, the gate, the why are they burning? The, oh, never mind. It's from Rohan, of course. They got fired. That's why. All right. So we we know what will eventually happen. Water power is available for the for the young man. Just do it. Go here and use it, man. Knock them out of the wall. The ends. They don't stand a chance. Saruman is putting in some pressure. Beautiful fireball incoming. But he's getting chang 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 chang. It is you shall not pass. Here is gonna be used, not even close. Big army, big W. Gondor Aizen beating Rohan and Aizen and dominating the map and Norian. GG well played, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like the video subscribe for more videos like this in the future i will see you next time until then take care of yourself keep hitting like a truck and as always 
stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.